Hello, my name is Morgan. I'm a professional dog trainer. And in today's video, we are finally gonna e-collar train my foster dog, Crash. If you're new here, don't start at this video. In fact, I need you to go all the way back through to my obedience training series. That is gonna be the first step to e-collar training your dog. You see, you don't start with e-collar day one. No, 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 no. Actually, what you're gonna do is train obedience commands with leash pressure and with treats before you even get to the e-collar series part. So if you haven't watched those videos, click somewhere in the universe of YouTube and find it, okay? But once you've caught up, happy to have you here. Let's get started. So before we even get started on the e-collar portion of this, there's a few requirements I need you to make sure that your dog knows before we get to e-collar training. And that's gonna be leash pressure. So ideally, before you get started with e-collar, I want you to test your dog on these few things. Number one, make sure that they understand that leash pressure up means put your butt down. Make sure they understand that leash pressure down means go down. Leash pressure towards the place bed means go to the place bed. Leash pressure into the heel position means heel and leash pressure towards you means come back to you. You see, we're gonna utilize the leash pressure to condition the e-collar. Your dog has to have confidence in leash pressure means X, Y, and Z, and then we get to pair it with the e-collar. If your dog does not know these things, please, oh please, don't start with the e-collar yet. The reason e-collars have a bad rap is because people go out and buy them, they put it on the dog, and every time the dog does something bad, they press the button, and the dogs are confused. Reasonably so, right? Can you imagine going to work and your boss tapping you on the shoulder and then just staring at you, but not actually explaining why? Don't you think you'd be pretty confused? That's what I like to imagine the dogs go through. It's this feeling that's happening out of nowhere and they have no association of what it means. Some people, they think it works because the dog stops doing the bad behavior. The reality is the dog's probably just shutting down out of confusion. So instead of confusing our dogs, that's why you have to start with obedience training with a leash before we start to incorporate the e-collar. But because I know you've been following along on my YouTube training series, you're ready for all these steps. So let's dive into the e-collar. Let's talk about some brands. I've been training dogs for nine years and I've only used one brand. I've experimented with many, 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 and I always go back to my tried and true Dogtra. Anything you could buy on Amazon? Negative. No, mm -mm, don't do that. I want you to invest in good quality equipment that's gonna last you the lifetime of your dog and it's gonna be safe. I use the Dog Trick 280C and the Dog Trick Q, which just so happens to be the sponsor of today's video. If I was just starting out with e collar with my dog, the Dog Trick Q Gen 2 is gonna be my go to collar. Here's why you've got plastic contact points that are gonna be a lot more comfortable with dogs with shorter coats or with sensitive skin. You can sit it on the dog horizontally, or for your smaller dogs, you could sit it on them vertically. And the best part of all is this itty bitty lightweight remote. Look how cute it is! Not only is it small and lightweight, but it also has this handy dandy little carabiner right here. So you can clip it on your leash and take it everywhere with you. It's extremely user-friendly because there's only one button you need to worry about, as well as the boost option. Boost is going to be essential for reactive dogs, for easily distracted dogs. This makes it super convenient when you've got a boost option for those high distraction moments. I wish they had this when I was first learning e-collar because it makes it super simple for you. This is the collar I'm going to be using to train Crash, so if you want to get one of these and follow along in the training series, use code WILD5 to get one for yourself. Off. Thanks, Dogtra. So when should your dog be wearing the collar? I want them to be wearing it a few days before we even find their level. You see, dogs become collar smart and they very quickly figure out this thing goes on. I have to listen to my commands. This thing comes off. I no longer have to listen to my commands, which is not the goal. I don't want your dog listening to the equipment or listening only when you have the remote in your hand. No, I want them listening to your commands and our eventual goal here is to get away from all this stuff. Sorry, I'm sorry I did that to you. So in order to prevent your dog from becoming collar smart, we want them wearing this all the time with some exceptions. My rule is the first thing they wake up in the morning, they're gonna put on the equipment. If they're gonna spend any time in their crate during the day, they can go ahead and take it off. And then at the very end of the evening, you can take it off as well. So they get a break from it when they're in their crate and at nighttime. Outside of those examples, this should be on your dog all the time. So this just becomes like their new flat collar. I don't want them listening to the equipment. 
So wear this more often than not. Don't just put this on for training sessions. Which brings me to, I want you to be wearing this with your dog a few days before you even find their level. Crash here has already been wearing it, so now let's talk about proper fit. This is probably the hardest part of e-collar is getting a proper fit because the thing is, is your dog has fur and we have to get these contact points to make contact with their skin, which means it's got to fight through their coat. So this equipment has to be tighter than any equipment you've probably used before. But the benefit here is the tighter it is and the better contact these contact points are making with their skin, the lower the levels we get to use. If this is just a dingly dangly little necklace around their neck, you're going to be like, Morgan, my dog doesn't feel it till level 50, which is is not normal. My cat's up there, hence why he's distracted. So make sure that this is fit nice and snug, not too tight, but definitely not too loose or else the equipment is totally useless. I like to position the box behind either side of the ear. I also like to switch it up on a daily basis. One day I position it on the right side, the next day I position it on the left side, and that's just to give that skin a little bit of a break um, because this equipment does have to be tight. In rare occasions it can cause irritation, but as long as you're giving that skin a little bit of a break, your dog will be fine. So one day on the right side, one day on the left side, one day on the right side, one day on the left side. I put it up high on the neck, but not too, too high. Right about yay, right about there. Actually, I'm gonna loosen my slip leash and switch these around. I'm gonna position it right there. That looks good. I'm gonna pull it tight, but not too tight. How do you know if it's too tight? I should be able to fit two fingers underneath the strap, but I should be able to fit any fingers underneath the contact points. If my finger can easily slide underneath that contact point, then their coat is guaranteed to be piled in between and then your dog's not gonna feel the stimulation. So I think I do need it to be one tighter. I also like to give the box a little bit of a wiggle here and that also helps to separate the coat and then pull all this neck chub down too. Let's give it a check, two fingers. <sighs> That feels a little snug to me. He's of course gonna be that in-between dog, so sometimes dogs are in between holes. I'd rather it fit a little bit too big than too tight, because obviously if it's too tight, it's uncomfortable. What I like to do if a dog is in between holes is sit it a little lower down at the base of their neck instead of up high, because they're gonna be a little thicker down here. So I'm gonna pull the box down a ways. Yeah, that looks good. That looks good. And again, still separating all that fur. Can still fit two fingers, but the box is not easily rotating. That looks like a good fit to me. You look perfect. A few last minute details before we get started in finding Crash's level. You're gonna wanna charge it every night. These do have a really long battery life, but I'm all about creating positive habits. So at the very end of the night, when you take it off of your dog, plug it in and then first thing in the morning, put it back on them. Your dog can swim with this equipment on, but my rule of thumb is after they swim, I take it off, I let them dry, and then I put it back on. The reason being is dogs do a lot of shaking. And so when you have tight equipment paired with water and a lot of shaking, it can and rub, which can create some discomfort. So after my dogs are done swimming, I take it off, I let them dry, and I'll even switch it up and put it on the other side. This is debatably the hardest part of e-collar is finding what level your dog feels it and what level actually maintains their attention. So a couple of upfront signs and signals that we're gonna be looking for is scratching. Some dogs wanna give it an itch. Some dogs will freeze. Some dogs will look in the direction. So if your box is located on the left, some dogs will look at it. What else will they do? Some dogs start to offer obedience. So you might press the button and the dog will be in the sit. As far as what setting we're gonna have this on, I like to work my dogs on the continuous setting. The only button I have to worry about is this one up front. You'll see up here at the very tippity top, it's set to C for continuous. So I'll hold down the continuous button and we're just gonna test it and look for some sort of body language that tells us he feels it. Oh, big sweat. Okay, I'm gonna start off on level two and hold the continuous button down. I'll put my hands like this to let you know how long I am pressing and holding the button. And when I put it down is when I let go. Nothing, nobody ever feels it on a two. Here's a four, nothing. Here's a six, that's six. Still don't think he's feeling it. Here's eight, still don't think he's feeling it. See, this is why you don't do it around distractions because he's more concerned about looking at my cat than what we're doing right here. This crash, don't be crazy. So here's a level 20, nothing. Here's a 40. Is it on? Oh my God. 
If I forgot to turn it on. It wasn't on. Make sure your equipment is on before you actually get started in this exercise. Let's start over. We're gonna start them off on level two. Here's level eight. Oh, oh. You see that little bit of alertness he got? Yes, no, maybe so. So I'm gonna leave it on a level eight. If I think my dog might be feeling it, I pause on this level. I give a little reset, make him walk around the room. I'm gonna try level eight now. Okay, this is much more normal than what he was experiencing before. He's done a sit, bonus, he's also done a little itch. You definitely see he got a little bit alert there. Let's test level eight again. I'm gonna do a lot of testing because it's so important to make sure that your dog feels it before we go into the conditioning exercises. So here is level eight again. Oh, head twitch, went for the itch. Okie dokie artichokey. I was getting really concerned we were on a level 40. Now I can confidently say that Crash is feeling it in a low distraction environment on a level eight. If you're getting up to like the 40s with your dog, it's probably because you need to adjust your equipment and make sure that it's on. A normal range is gonna be between eight and 20 for most dogs. And that's how you're gonna find your dog's working level on the dog true cue. The next step in this process is gonna be to condition your dog on that level to all the basic obedience commands, but you're just gonna have to wait for next week's video. So make sure you head to the dog tour website, use code WILD5, order the dog tour cue, so that way next week we can train this together. If you guys have any questions about how to find your dog's level, please leave a comment below. Also, don't forget to subscribe, so that way next week we can condition the e-collar to all the basic obedience commands. I can't wait. Good luck and happy training. Bye.